Hello, everyone. I'm Sterling Hedgepeth, the programming manager for both the Mill Valley and the Docklands Film Festivals. And uh, we have here today Santiago Mitra, uh, who was the director of Argentina 1985, which you saw just now. Uh, thanks for joining us, Santiago, and welcome back since you did attend Mill Valley in October. Yes, thank you very much. I'm, uh, well, I'm happy to be uh, virtually back uh, with you in Mill Valley. Um, let's start. Uh, first of all, congratulations. It's a wonderful film, a very powerful film. Um, how, did you, how did you get the idea of making this film and how did it develop over the time that it took to, to make? Well, it, it's, it's, it's difficult at the moment uh, to, to, to arrive to the to moment when the, when the idea appeared because I think it was uh, like a life uh, await, waiting uh, film that, I, that I've been wanting to do uh, for a long, long time, uh, longer than, than I can remember. Uh, I have a lot of admiration for this trial because of the context it was done just one year after the dictatorship uh, ended. So it was like a very risky and brave decision by the government to, to settle the, the territory to, to Israel to happen. And uh, it was a very risky and brave decision uh, by the, the judges and the prosecutors, and of course, all the witnesses uh, to go and, and give testimony. It was just one year after the dictatorship ended, all the uh, countries around were still governed by uh, by dictatorships, the militaries were still uh, a powerful uh, and a threatening uh, power in the in the society. So it's uh, and, and it's a unique case. It was Argentina was the first country in the in the region and I think in the world who did a, a thing like this, like a, a civil court uh, judging the the um, a military dictatorship. And it was so important to build the the the, the, the democracy, the new democracy that was uh, re. Uh, being uh, well, we I don't know how to explain reborn after the the awful of dictatorships and dictatorships that this um, that my country passed through the last uh, hundred years, uh, and it's I, I think I think for me now it's uh, like a like an example uh, of what uh, we Argentinians or or what about societies can do to build and ensure democracy. Uh, I think justice to, to build a better democracy is something that it's a, a lot more uh, important and relevant in these days than, than what I thought uh, when, I, when I began uh, doing this film. Well, it's been almost 40 years uh, since this happened. What is the cultural uh, memory of this uh, episode, especially for everyone who's been born after it happened? What, what did they know about it? What did they learn about it in the schools now? Yeah, well, it, it, well that's, that, that for me was one of the things that, I, that made me want to, want to do the film probably, because I realized the, well, the event was not uh, as remembered as it should, because, uh, well, many people was, is born after the, many adults are, are born in, uh, after the, the trial happened and, uh, and, and time uh, passed, so uh, people tend to forget. Um, but, 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 but I think for me, the, the more important thing was to realize that many teenagers and young people were not uh, remembering or, or knew anything about this, uh, about this, this trial. And, uh, and when I started the research, uh, I, uh, the, well, the idea, no, the, the information that, that Strasera could not uh, uh, build team with the people who were who working the justice at the moment, and, and he needed and he need to he need to build uh, the team with uh, with teenagers or or twenty year old lawyers or not even lawyers uh, who had no experience because uh, the justice was not trusting or were afraid of the trial. Uh, people in the justice were were afraid of the trial. So for for me, I, I think it was a, a very powerful image that I thought it, it was something that I wanted to bring back to to this uh, to this uh, 2022 2023 uh, this uh, like a well old lawyer who has the second opportunity of uh, redeeming himself of not doing as much as he should during the dictatorship but surrounded with this uh, energy of the, that uh, that the young uh, people bring Bring, uh, bring. It was, uh, it was, it was an image, image that, it, that I thought it was politically important for the, to bring to to this time. Uh, when when I see 
and it worries me to see uh, so many teenagers that uh, are not uh, interested at all in politics or are having right-wing uh, proto-fascist uh, speeches in, in many places. I don't know. I think I, I, I think it, it was uh, one of one of the things that that I think this this film should do. Now there were uh, obviously an enormous number of uh, court documents and transcripts, as well as all the hearings that were um, aired on television. How much of that is readily available to the general Argentine population? Well, I'm, I mean, if, if if you if you want to do a research, you can you can. Uh, get to them, but it's not like a super well known, let's say you can find some stuff in YouTube, uh, or, or if you, if you go in the internet, but uh, not, not that much. Um, I mean, the, 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 the trial is completely taped. The, um, how do I say I know I never know how to say the word like the um, expedientes, all the um, transcripts of the hearings, uh, and all the papers of the course. They are available if you if you do a <laughs> if you go to a, to a justice and try to get them, but it's not something super easy. But um, but but they are they are there. I, I think and and now uh, after our film is was released, I think we are uh, being more conscious uh, uh, about uh, the importance of uh, preserving those. Uh, oh yeah, memory archives. Uh, uh, but um, for us, for for the research was uh, super important. We we watched uh, probably yeah well, the whole the whole trial, the whole hearings, and and, and of course the, the closing speech of Strasera, uh, and we read the all, all everything that it was in the in the justice about the about the about this trial. It, it, it's it's something that. That, that for me was was super important as, as a director, not only as a script writer, because when, when you the, the image of the trial is like um, the neck of the witnesses talking, and, and we could not see the, their faces because at the moment, because of what well what I've just said, it was just one year after the dictatorship. People who run the repressive system were still free. The people who kidnapped, tortured, murdered, they were still free at the moment. So it, it was a way of protecting the, the witnesses, not to show the faces in TV, uh, and to show like a small portion of the, of the, of the hearings. Uh, and, it's, and it's what what's it in the collective uh, memory, I'd say, it's, it's like a neck, with a, with a, sometimes with a voice. Uh, and, and for me, it, it was uh, something that I, that I wanted to do, like to shoot, of course, the other side, and to try to, to see the faces of the witnesses and the and the pain, the anger, the well, the solitude that they, they, they probably felt at that moment when they, when they were telling for the first time uh, the the horrors that they lived uh, during the their kidnaps, the ones who could survive or the or the people who were trying to find their their families. Uh, it was something that it was very, very clear that we need to see those faces that during, during so many years were not able to be seen, even if we are recreating them with actors, but to try to imagine what they could feel at that moment. But also I, I, I in, that, in, in that sequence and in, in other sequences of the film, I'm mixing like uh, the textures, like uh, the, the original taping of the, of the hearings with, uh, with our recreation through, uh, well, we, we, we shot some, all, all the scenes that we recreate in, in, in fiction, we, they were also shot uh, with a Umatic camera, which was the same camera that was used uh, in the 85. So we can like uh, go from one thing to another, like smoothly or not uh, being like a yeah, interruptive uh, procedure uh, in the editing. So I don't know why, why, why I, I ended up talking about this, but <laughs> it's something that, that, uh, that it's important for me to tell. Well, it obviously speaks to how challenging it was to, to consolidate and distill so much testimony, so many witnesses, so much uh, experience um, into a single film. What was the what was some of the biggest challenges for adapting this into a feature movie? Well, uh, it, it was it was uh, it, it's it's a very important film for for my country. So it so it was uh, challenging in, in every aspect, probably, but. Uh, I think uh, 
I think that the, 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 probably the thing that we, we spoke before, the, how to tell, uh, how to get to the heart of darkness of this film, which was, was uh, the moment when the witnesses tell their, their stories. I think it was, it was the, the biggest challenge and, and where we needed to be more respectful and, and not to go over the edge. It was like a make a good balance. So we quickly find, uh, well, this is a story that which was true, the, that uh, the mother of uh, Luis Moreno Gambo, who was uh, connected to the militaries by his family, was after, after listening to, uh, to the testimony of uh, Adriana Calvo de la Borde, was uh, asking his son to forgive her for what she used to believe. And, and we understood that that um, testimony of Adriana was, uh, has uh, had truly the impact to understand the, the horror of, the, of, those, of that repressive system, the, the hate and the disrespect for any, I don't know, human, uh, human, human for humanity that those people had. Uh, so, it, so it was uh, like uh, our, it was just going to be our center uh, to tell, uh, to try to uh, resonate in, in, in all the other ones. Of course, we used uh, a lot more, uh, but, but I think it was uh, the, more, the more challenging. And then, yeah, the, the closing speech of Estrasera, it's, uh, it's so powerful and, well, you know, and we, we, did a, we did a trial, a trial film in a way, like a, when we tried to make it the, the more classic we could. Um, and, and we are used to see, uh, like uh, in the closing speeches, lawyers or prosecutors like walking all over all over the place and pointing someone and doing like uh, big uh, actings um, in in a way, <laughs> even if, if they are lawyers. But in this case, the Argentinian justice does not allow that. You have to be seated on your on your chair. But uh, and so for me, it was one of one of the challenges uh, on how to give dynamic and power to a scene when, when, when that's going to be fifteen minutes long. And it was only one man uh, seated with a paper in, in its hand. Uh, so it was something that worried me a lot during a long time. But when I went to, for the first time to the, um, to the um, how, how do you say, the, 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 well, the place where the trial, the courtroom, mm -hmm. um, to the courtroom, because we shot in the real courtroom, I, I moved a desk and I, and I put it in the place where I was seated. And then I put some chairs in the place where the commanders, the generals were seated. And I realized that Estrasera was seated like less than a meter away from Videla, who was, who was the head of this uh, military dictatorship. So I, I understood the tension this man should have at that moment, like having to say this speech that he was talking, um, he, was, he was the whole society in a way, and one meter away from this guy. So I understood that I could use like, um, like the shots that keep them in the, in the same size of the frame to build it, to build this tension, and it, and it was, uh, well, it was, it, was, it was something that uh, finally we, I think we, we we did it in a good way. Of course, there's, uh, there's Ricardo also who who does uh, some magic when he <laughs> when he has good words to say, and the words were great, uh, the ones that uh, Sasera wrote. Not, uh, well, so, he so. he does such an amazing job, and he's obviously a legend in uh, Latin American. Uh, cinema, had you worked with him before? And what did you talk about as far as creating this character who is a real person? I, I, I met him uh, in my previous film uh, that's called uh, The Summit. Uh, we, we got along uh, very good there. I, I felt that he was uh, beside uh, these magnificent, magnificent actors that, that many people know. He's a, a real cinema. He he knows uh, he knows and loves cinema and understands and and, and what, uh, likes likes talking about cinema a lot. So I understood I could have a, like a partner uh, uh, also uh, than the actor director relationship. So in this film, when I started to develop it, I, I told it, I told him that I was I was working on this idea and, and he immediately told me I'm doing a Sarasera. Uh, uh, probably half choking because Ricardo is very selective on what he does and, and he needs to read the script. But then when he read the script, he was uh, he, he he liked it and he wanted to be on board and he also 
assumed uh, the role of being a producer of the film with me and we've been develop developing the film from from a from a long long time he read on the drafts and and we discussed uh, the um, the character and, and all the aspects of the film uh, for a long time uh, it was i mean it was a, it, it was a thin uh, how do i say this it was it was a little bit it was difficult on the on the on, and, and it was probably one of the things that we spoke the most the most how to approach to approach to a real character because uh, I mean uh, yeah it's he he uh, Ricardo he looks like him but he's not exactly like him uh, should he imitate him in a way or try to be the more the similar uh, the more the more similar to to the to the guy or try to express himself with his own. Uh, expressive tools in a way so it was uh and, and Ricardo was super clear because he has a lot of conscious on, on what what what, what uh, about what he can do that he imitation was not a good path that he could do like something with the hair the mustache the the the, the mustache the um, the glasses uh, and then like try to live and feel the scenes through his own feelings because uh well, the script was already clear. The character was already clear. Mr. Acera was already living in, 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 the, in the script. So he needed to connect to that to try to bring, uh, uh, well, this new, this uh, fictional Estrasera uh, back to life. And something, something funny that for us was, a, was, a, was like, a, like, a, like a pointing, we were doing things right. Uh, during, during the shooting, uh, one I think it was the second or third week of shooting. Ricardo was uh, completely well dressed like a, like the character, and he was going uh, uh, to his motor ho motor home. And when he was going to the motor home, because we were shooting in a real just palace, just his palace of Argentina, there was a couple, an elderly couple, who approached him and told them, I told him he was. Uh, they were neighbors. Of Estrasera for a long time, and they and, they, and and he worked with him in during a period of time. So and they were friends uh, for a long time with him, and they told him, uh, "You don't look uh, nothing like like Estrasera," <laughs> but at this, but uh, but at the same time, you're exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So Ricardo was like shocked, and he came back to the, to the set and told me, "Santiago, look what happened to me." Like, uh, like it was something that that when he realized, and I and I, and I realized that that it was correct what we were doing. Like it was a big uh, proof that our and it was very motivating. Mm. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Now Stracera died in uh, 2015, but of course his team had so many really young people in it. Um, were you able to contact any of them to talk about their experience on the legal team for um, uh, for the prosecution? Yes, I, I spoke to. I think they were my uh, main source. Uh, Judith, who who is one who is the youngest uh, in the in the team, and Marco, who is uh, the son of the theater guy who works with Estrasera, they were the the two people that, that I spoke the most. They helped me a lot of understanding the the dynamic of the prosecutorial team, talk, telling me things about Estrasera, telling me things about the the the, the strategy. Uh, but also helped me making connections to people that they thought I should talk. They were like super generous and I, it was super important for me. Uh, and actually they both do uh, small cameos uh, during the film. Uh, but also I spoke a lot with uh, Luis Moreno Campo. Uh, uh, Luis is a, well, such a clever and important person for, 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 the, for law. Uh, in, in the world, not only in Argentina, because after after Israel, he, well, some years after Israel, he went to, and he was the first prosecutor prosecutor in the International Court of La Haya. Uh, so it was a privilege to be able to talk, uh, and 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 that he himself explained me step by step how they did to organize uh, the proof, the hearings, uh, the. The indictments to to the indictments they asked uh, it was uh, very very interesting but 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 when I realized that it's also very interesting when when you work in the in a in a film like, like this based in historical events is that you when you do the research you start to build a, 
like uh, uh, connections to people and th th those people they, they, they exist so you're writing about people that you, that, that, that that exist that uh, you care about <laughs> sometimes that and that they are going to see the film so uh, the responsibility on, on, on writing is uh, is is is, is uh, even even more uh, because you can imagine that moment. So for, for me, it was uh, super interesting because I mean, even even small characters uh, of the film that I, that I spoke to, uh, I, I knew that okay, this guy is going to see. I, I want he liked the scene when when his character is appearing and he feels that he's well represented. Uh, so uh, it, it was uh, it was it was very interesting. It, it was as I said, it was the first time I worked in a in a historical event film. Was there something that their contribution made that was surprised to you, regardless of how much research you had done about the court and about the event? Was there something that they shared with you that made you look at it at a brand new way? Well, yeah, I think the the humor. They were the ones uh, for the first time that they were they were they, they, they talked to me about uh, about the humor that was in the in the prosecutorial team, leading by Estrasera, the, who, who they, they call the El Loco, who is crazy. And it's the way that in, in Argentina you call people who has a, like a funny and explosive personality. Uh, and, uh, and, the, and, then, and the, they use the humor uh, to protect themselves of the, well, yeah, of what they were living. It was uh, probably very tough and it's a very human mechanism to, to use humor to, to try to well, protect yourself from 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 uh, the pain, like it's the same thing that, that the same uh, reason probably that uh, that uh, people make jokes in in, in funerals. Uh, well, so so it, it was and it was very enlightening because Mariano and me, the Mariano is the co-writer. Uh, we were afraid of certain solemnity that could uh, that the subject uh, subject could bring you know that and that the people may be afraid of that also okay this is such a well dark event in Argentinian history even if not the trial but it was it's referring on, uh, in, in the you know, about uh, such a dark event so to understand that humor was possible to uh, enlighten or to make a yeah, to, to go through the film in a, in, a, in a smoother way, it was something that was very revealing for us. And the, and the humor of Estrasera was, uh, was, was super important because mm -hmm. we designed, the first thing that we wrote was the first scene, not, not, some, not, not, uh, not always the same, not always like that, but in this case it was on, on that, when we read the scene and we laughed, I said, okay, this is, this is a good way. If you start laughing in a film like this and you go, deeper and deeper and deeper till you get to this uh, moment well yeah, that you know that you will probably cry because it was for us it was we cried when we were watching we're doing the research many times it was a, a good tool to use you mentioned that um you shot on some of the same locations where the the event actually existed the courtroom and and other areas um what was the challenge about creating a period film that was, you know, 30, 40 years as far as cars, as far as fashion, as far as other locations that you need to, to try to be as authentic about? Uh, well, it, it's, it's um, I think, uh, I didn't realize how, 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 because I was born in the 80s and the 80s is my childhood. I, I, I have the sensation that, well, it's not that far from, in terms of time, but uh, the city has changed a lot. I think it's uh, to, to make a film uh, in set uh, in the 80s is uh, as difficult as to make a film set in the 60s or in the 40s. You need to choose the right locations, to, uh, yeah, to replace uh, with uh, CGI uh, some stuff. So it was a lot more difficult than, than what we, that I was uh, expecting. Luckily, I have a, an amazing uh, art department team uh, that they have like they brought uh, clever ideas and 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 Micaela, who is the art director, uh, a production designer, she 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 was she told me and she had very clear that we we did not need to uh, over interpret the the eighties like the eighties should be subtle because it could be distracting in this story so we should use like 
like key elements that are iconic in the 80s, like the cassettes, the radios, the, the old telephones, the public telephones, uh, the smoking all the time, um, to, 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 to uh, that, uh, on the cars, uh, but that, those elements will, will make us traveling, ta traveling time uh, and, and, and not to try to, uh, to be everything like a, over uh, narrated. Uh, so I, I, I think she, 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 she had a, she had it very clear and she was right. And, um, and the, because, because, I mean, in this film, we could not do anything that was very distractive in, 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 in terms of uh, image. So we need to be subtle always because uh, well, the, the, the story was, was already there. So not to, not to confuse with, with too much uh, emphasis in, in any, in any part of the image, uh, wow! And, and then, and then the the the, the, the costumes, of course, it's, uh, it's something that that it, that it's very iconic and very 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 important. Even if the in the eighties in Argentina are not the same like uh, in the eighties in LA <laughs> or in California, they are more uh, brown and blue. And uh, uh, we used a lot of uh, pictures uh, from the trial and from the period. I think it was our main reference. To understand the, the look of the city uh, and the texture that we're going to give to the film, yeah, um, it, but 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 also very entertaining. Yeah. Um, so obviously the the story is one thing, but also um, the tone is something very different and very important. You do a wonderful job capturing and balancing the tone of a courtroom procedural, but also the paranoia of a thriller. Um, how did you find a way to balance that? And that did that evolve over time as you cut the film? I have to say that um, the, the, the final cut uh, of the film is not that far from the, um, from the script. Uh, we, we did a, a writing process, which was very long and very detailed that we, contemplate a lot uh, the rhythm that the, that the film uh, needed to have and all the atmospheres. And I, well, and I'm the writer, so it's like, uh, for me, it's like the film growing in terms of images, not only writing. Uh, so we had a, like a, yeah, the, it was already, uh, a lot of it was already there. Um, we, we, we were thinking in like a old classic, uh, Hollywood films, trial films, like, uh, I don't know what, which one I can tell you, like yeah. Judgment of Nuremberg, uh, yeah, and, and many others, yeah, Witness of the Prosecutor. We wanted to make uh, like a very classical films. And we and we also want, I like to think that the films related to, to Frank Capra, like in the way his portraits, his heroes, or well, normal heroes, uh, or to, and, the, and the, this use of uh, humor, it's very, of the John Ford films, with the historical films of John Ford, it's like a, we were thinking a lot about those uh, those films when we were writing. But then, in the when we were trying to well to took the script to images, it was it was the films from the seventies that, that we were we were using the more because we wanted into the the, the, the this uh, seventy three vibe in the in the image and in the rhythm. I think uh, we were. I mean, the Javier Julián, who is DOP, he was, uh, he's a big fan of uh, all the President's Men. So he was bringing me ideas uh, from, from that film and from uh, well, others from, the, from, the, from that period. Also the conversation from Coppola, like in the use of zooms and, and uh, uh, high angles on the, on the camera. Uh, it was like, uh, yeah, it was very interesting like to mix those uh, two, uh, well, distant and not so distant traditions to try to, to use them to tell this particular Argentinian story, you know? Because, I mean, I mean the, the story is, uh, the story, the event is, is massive and it's so, so important, but uh, we needed to do a good film also. Like I think that was entertaining. It was powerful, it was tense, and you can feel uh, the atmosphere because otherwise, yeah, the, the subject is nothing. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, at some point, when when we when when we 
you start to realize that, okay, well, now we are doing cinema and cinema needs to be powerful and, needs, and you need to connect to people and to make them feel the things that you think the character felt and well, whatever. It's, uh, it's also another responsibility, you know, that, uh, but, but it was, uh, it was very interesting. The, the, I think the, the, the bigger, the biggest uh, thing that we found during the, the editing was the mixing of textures and the, and the using of the archive footage, which for me was really, was a big revelation. It was, uh, it's amazing. I think it brings uh, those scenes uh, to something that uh, I did not imagine, and and, and it's uh, it makes 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 them a lot more complex uh, in terms of cinematography uh, and uh, in terms of uh, how to work with. Uh, non-fiction through fiction in a way uh, so but uh, well, yeah and and and, and, I, and I had a, a very good editor <laughs> who's uh, andre pepe Trada, uh, who's uh who yeah his sense of rhythm to 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 work in the scenes with me was a uh, it was super important um how has the film been received in argentina it, it was it's it's great <laughs> it's, a, it's a number one film uh, in, in the in box office uh, of last year, uh, and it's still running in, in some theaters. After we were we we started in uh, October, and the film is still on, in some theaters. Uh, so it it, it, it became a, like a like a big big event, and, and it's something that for me is is, is, a, is very important because when we're shooting the film, it was the, the worst the worst uh, moment of the COVID. Uh, so all the cinemas were closed. And we were not knowing that we were go if we were going to be able to show the film in cinemas. Uh, so now, well, time has passed. COVID has not gone away, but uh, enlightened a little bit, and 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 that people went to see the, this film, and they 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 it, it happened something that was very interesting that people wanted to share the experience of watching this film. Uh, in, in the in the cinema because of the because it means it's it's uh, the, the trial of the juntas the juicio juntas the trial of year five it's uh, like a collective struggle you know it's something that society did not only Estrasera, Moreno Campo the prosecutors and the trial it's like we we as a society did and it's something that I think for Argentinians makes us uh, feel uh, proud so it was something like going all together and, and into the cinemas there were packed cinemas during. Uh, Several weeks. It, it, it was amazing. Of course, when, then, then when you when you work in a in a political film, there's a lot of controversy and people who saying, okay, but they are not telling this part of the story and they're not telling that and whatever. But I think controversy when when you when you when you do political films is is the best thing uh, that you can ask because uh, they uh, amplify the the discussions or or, or or themes that they are already there in the in the film and they and they can bring it to to another level and so. The, the film worked amazingly in, in the box office, uh, in, the, in the reviews and in the festivals, but also brought uh, many interesting uh, controversies and discussions to uh, to the media. Uh, that for me was super, super, super important and super interesting. Well, this was a wonderful, not only an, an important historical event that's just as relevant now as it was 40 years ago, but it's a wonderful film. Thank you so much for sharing with us at Mill Valley. Thank you so much for sharing it with us today. And uh, good luck with thank the film, Santiago. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.